Good morning. So good to have you with us today at St. Simon's Christian Renewal Facebook Live. Welcome. We want to welcome all of our church family today. We're glad that you have joined us. We want to welcome our fellowship of churches that have also, many of you have joined with us today, uh, and other churches in the community. They're not having services today, so welcome. We're so glad that you're with us today. Pray God's blessings on you. We're going to pray together. We're going to have a time of worship. This is not a normal worship service, a normal service today. Uh, we have our elders and families and uh, staff here with us today and so thankful for them being with us. So we miss you in person, but we're thankful that we can worship God the way that we are today. So let's pray together. Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've created, Lord. We know times are different right now, but God, we know that you are still God. You're still King. You're still Lord. And we worship you today, God. We honor you. We thank you, Father, for the time that we have now to bring glory and honor to you as a family. God, that we worship you together. Lord, bring us closer together. Bring us closer to you, Lord, even during this time as we worship you together. Uh, worship you together today, Father. We honor you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to accomplish today by your anointing, by your word, and by your worship, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The next sound you hear is a shofar. The shofar was blown in the Old Testament as we began to worship the Lord. So we're going to hear the sound of a shofar before Wendy and Elder Dean leads us in worship today. Amen. the sins of the world his blood breaks the chains 
top of Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sing it with us. Who can stop the Lord? that God is so powerful. He's our comfort. And he's our peace. And he's our joy. And his mercy. His mercy never fails. So this morning, we are going to set aside everything that's going on. And we are going to sing. And we are going to praise. We are going to sing about the goodness of God, because no matter what is happening, let me say that one more time, no matter what is happening, God is good, and he is worthy, he is worthy to be praised. I love you, Lord, oh, your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh, I will sing of the goodness of God we're going to sing that together I love you Lord oh your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head oh, I will see of the goodness of God Let's sing the goodness And all my life you have been faithful And all darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God and all my
Amen again. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am gave, I will see of the good. Psalms 107, 19 and 20 says, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. So, Father, we come to you this morning, God. Lord, we are in distress. There are a lot of people that they just don't know which way to turn today. So, Father, we just come to you, God. We ask you just to meet the needs, Lord. God, we ask you for healing. We ask for you for deliverance. Father God, we ask for you to be our comforter today. God, we also lift up Cornell Osborne's mother, Lord. She broke her arm. She needs healing, Lord. We ask for Mike Malavan to be completely healed in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you comfort Tina Gaines and her family in the death of her husband, Morris. God, we ask for healing for Brenda Kilpatrick and for John, Lord. God, we ask that you just protect all of us from this coronavirus, Lord. God, we ask for complete health, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask for healing and wholeness, God. We ask for protection. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over every member of our church, God, over every family that's associated with us, over every person watching today, God, in the name of Jesus. We ask for complete health and wholeness. And God, as Pastor Mike comes to bring your word today, Lord, God, I know that there's a word burning in his heart. And God, I pray that you'll just help him to deliver it today in the way you would have him deliver it. And God, I ask that you just have our ears tuned into you, into your word today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Good morning. Becoming part, part of the church service this morning. Where we, where, we, uh, where we accept our offerings and, and our tithes. Before we get going here, uh, let me give you the details on it. But more importantly, giving is an act of worship. And especially at the time, at time we're facing right now, the church doors are locked, but the church is well. The church is well and open. When it comes to giving, you can uh, give, give to our website, uh, text giving through our secure uh, SMS text number 912-307-3538. Or you can go online and get our website at www.christianrenewal.org and click on the tab online giving. You can mail in your check, or you can call us, and one of our elders will come to your door and pick it up. Um, it's kind of strange to talking to a group of people that I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who hears my voice this morning. It is my hope that there is at least one of them that thinks that I that how I used to think. Giving or tithing uh, in our world today is often questioned. And I can tell you without the shadow of a doubt that tithing made a difference in my life. Uh, I don't know who you are who hears, who hears that message this morning. I can, I can assure you that I shudder to think to going back to where I used to be. Tithing and giving made all the difference. I can truthfully say that money or giving has been one of the biggest blessings in my life. I, I, can, I can assure you 
that there was a time when there was more month than money. I wish I could stand here and explain to you how it all works. Uh, I can't. All I can assure you that 90% of my, of my income today goes further than the 100% I used to use. I say that and I thank the Lord for, for making me see the light. Join me in prayer this morning. Lord, you said in your scripture, you command us to give, be, be givers and cheerful givers. I pray, Father, that that message will reach every one of us, especially at the time we're facing right now. I can remember, Father, then at a time long, long time ago, when churches were full of people. We grew, we, grew, uh, we grew away from you, Father. We walked away from you, Lord, but you never left us. You, you were with us every step of the way. I praise you and I thank you, Father, for who you are in our life. Lord, I pray blessings over every person that hears this message this morning. It's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good morning again. It's an honor to have you with us. Pray God's blessings on you today, wherever you are and however you're listening today. Pray God is with you. Pray that you hear the word of the Lord today. As we want to encourage you, uh, encourage you to draw closer to the Lord today. Things are not normal as we define normal. Things aren't usual as the way we would usually say usual. How is your day today? Well, everybody can say that your day is different than what it's been before. Ever in our lifetime, we've never seen things the way that they currently are today. But I believe now is a good time, a perfect time for each one of us to come back to the fundamentals, to the foundation of knowing who God is, knowing God's character, knowing how he loves you, knowing the priority of God's life for you. And no matter your background today, no matter where you are, where you've been, where you currently are, where you're going, where you think you're going, I want to encourage you from the word of the Lord today, encourage you to draw closer to God and to know God. We all have room to know God more. There's not one of us that understands every attribute and the bigness and the greatness and the awesomeness of God. And so today I want to encourage you, as I'm encouraging myself, we're all in this together, in encouraging us to see the Lord and to know the Lord and to gain a deeper understanding of who he is. When we think about Jesus, his everyday life, when he, when he walked this earth, everything that he did, he talked to a lot of people. He talked to a lot of people. He even spent time with his disciples, teaching them. He taught, he preached, he was always with people. But one thing Jesus did that maybe we don't talk enough about is how he made priority to spend time with his father, to spend time with God. If Jesus made priority to spend time and to pull away to, to know God and to know his father, then I believe that I certainly need to do the same. The Bible says that Jesus didn't even want to do his own will, that Jesus himself desired to do not his will, but the will of his Father. I believe we can learn from that. Luke twenty two forty two 42 says that, Nevertheless, not my will, Jesus said, but yours be done. Jesus gave priority to draw closer to God, to draw, to draw closer to his Father, the one that sent him to, to learn what God wanted to do. Well, that's... That's hard for us because we, we have such smart people. We, we go to school and we go to college and we have experiences and we know what works and what doesn't work. So we come to a place in life that, that we have a great idea of where we're going to go and how we're going to get there. But many times we lay aside what God's will is for our life, which is the best, and we go by our will only. I want to give you the definition of know, K-N-O-W, to know. 
To know is to have developed a relationship through meeting and spending time with. How can we know God? We can know God by meeting with him and spending time with him. The level of knowing God that I believe that we need to pursue today, and, pers- and not only today, but tomorrow and the weeks and the months and even years to come. Because things will change. The coronavirus will be over. But where will that leave us? Well, there's a continue of knowing God. And, and, and the, the, the knowing that I'm referring to today reveals two things about God. It reveals his integrity. When you think of someone that has integrity, you think of someone that keeps the word. They listen. They follow through on what they've said. That's integrity. So, so we come to an understanding of God's integrity that he will always do what he says he will do. He's a God of integrity. We also come to an understanding of his ability. Not only is he, is he one to, uh, to fulfill what he's promised, to do what he says he'll do, a God of integrity, but he is able to do everything that he says he will do. We see God's ability. When we look through the word of God, we see that God was able to do all that he said he would do. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to prove it. God not only says it, he not only promises it, he's a God of integrity, but he also follows through his abilities. His abilities are also as powerful as his word. He never fails. God has never failed. But yet it's difficult for us to have a confidence in God. God, you're going you're to bring me through this. You're going to bring me through this thing. Well, I want to help build your confidence in God today. Confidence. And the good thing about God's word and, and trusting in him is that we always know he knows what's best. He knows what's best, and God is always right. God is not, he, he has never come back to the drawing table and said, well, my plan was good except for this. We need to tweak this. God has never done that. He, he's, he's always made the right decisions, and he's always been right about his decision. Philip, Philippians 3.10 says that I may know him. Notice that's capital H, know him who is God. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Knowing God. I'm reminded of a, of a, a trip that, that Chris and I took uh, just about five and a half weeks ago. As a matter of fact, our last grandchild was born, Maddox. Little man Maddox was born about five and a half weeks ago. And as Chris and I were traveling, we, we got word that Jordan was headed to the hospital about 5.30 that afternoon. And so we got everything together in a hurry and was on our way. And, of course, Mom, being the good mom Crystal is, she's concerned about Jordan, concerned about Mom, concerned about Maddox. And, and so we were on the road for a couple of hours, I suppose, in the six-hour drive and headed down, or what would only be a six-hour drive, headed down 95 and headed up to North Carolina. And Crystal just stopped reading, stopped doing what she was doing as I was driving on 95. And she said, Lord... I pray that you be with Jordan. I pray that you be with Maddox. I pray that this be a healthy delivery. I pray that there be no complications. I pray that everything will work perfectly and everything will do as you want it to happen. I pray for perfect health and peace. And so immediately while Crystal was praying that prayer, she didn't know it, but I had a vision just that quick. And as I kind of regained my composure, she went back to reading and to doing what she was doing. I've always kidded. Uh, crystal about when she's going into a parking lot of a, a supermarket or a, a shopping center uh, and I'm with her uh, every, it, it could look like Christmas all around but Crystal will say Lord help me find a front parking place and every single time Crystal gets a front row parking place most of the time it's the first one by the door and that never happens with me so I always kid Crystal about about her connection with God that God always answers her prayer immediately well as we ride down the road that day and, and immediately when Crystal got the word, the name Lord, out of her mouth. I immediately, in my mind's eye, I was still driving, but I saw just as clear as I can see this sanctuary today. The Lord himself and all the angels in heaven, I saw them. I saw them immediately turn their faces and turn their attention toward Crystal, and they stood there in full attention as though they were intently hanging on every single word Crystal prayed in that moment. And I saw them stand there through the entire time of her prayer. Now, she didn't know that, and I had to, I had to kind of regain my composure to tell her that. It took a few min- minutes for me to do that. But that's the way God is about you. 
When you cry out, Lord, when you, when you turn your attention toward God, he is there intently listening to every single word. You say, well, why doesn't he answer my prayers? We've got to come to an understanding of knowing who God is, no matter if he decides to come three days late according to our calendar or three days early. The timing is up to God, but our trust should still be in him to know that he will work everything out. Well, 3.30 the next afternoon, we, we got up that day and and uh, 3.30 that next afternoon, Jordan was in full-blown labor. So the nurse came in and she said, Jordan, you're in labor. Jordan pushed three times in 10 minutes. Maddox was here. There was, there, was no, there was no complication. There was no difficulty. It was ease. It was a healthy birth. Maddox is healthy and eating like his jeepa, growing. God is good. God answers your prayer. What am I saying? I'm saying that we need to have full confidence in God. We need to have full assurity in God that he will do what he says he will do. He's God of integrity, but he's also a God of ability that he will do all that he says he will do. Wouldn't it be a challenge for us to know each other and never see each other face to face? We can talk, we can converse, we can be on the phone, but there's something about being face to face that we grow in understanding better of one another. Well, I believe that's the way we should be with God. We should have an understanding face-to-face. It may not be physical face, but it's God turning his face toward you and you turning your face toward God and saying, God, I need help. I need you to bring about this thing in my life. God wants you to have a first-hand experience of how great he is. The thing about a first, first-hand experience, I could not talk Crystal out of not believing and trusting God. Why? Because she's had a first-hand experience of knowing how faithful God is how faithful he is to keep his word and how faithful he is to not only to hear but to do. He's always attentive to her prayer. No matter what you're doing, if you're at home right this moment, if you're in the hospital right this moment, if you're struggling about a job situation, if you're struggling about finances, if you're worried about your children, or if you're out as some I hear yesterday were out playing golf, some were out sitting by a pool frying chicken breast on the grill, some wherever you are, God is there with you. You can have full confidence in experiencing God firsthand. We see in the the Bible a story of Jacob. Jacob was the grandson of Abraham. Esau was Jacob's brother, and Esau and Jacob were completely different. They were totally different. Jacob, even the meaning of his name was deceiver. Jacob deceived, Jacob lied, Jacob manipulated. He he manipulated his, his, the, inheritance of his brother Esau traded it for a bowl of soup Esau was hungry and starving and said yes I'll give you whatever you want for that bowl of soup Jacob was a swindler well Jacob was working for a man named Laman we see the story in Genesis and he pursued Laman's daughter and he eventually married Laman's daughter on the night of Jacob's wedding to Laman's daughter Laman sent his other daughter the sister of Jacob's now new wife Laman sent his other daughter in to be with Jacob that night, the night of the honeymoon. When Jacob realized what had happened, he became angry. He became furious. He became very, very mad at his father-in-law. And this was the beginning of, a, of, of, a, of another level of, of chaos in Jacob's life. So Jacob run, runs away from the situation. He runs away from his father-in-law. He runs away from the situation have you ever found yourself running away from a situation thinking that it was going to solve things? So we run away, even to the extent of running away from God, running away from what God's trying to do in the chaos. Did you know that God isn't afraid of chaos? God isn't afraid of, of bad situations. God isn't afraid of a virus. But God can bring, he can bring something good out of a bad situation. And so Jacob was running. He was running from all this chaos. He found out his brother Esau was on his heels and was trying to come after him. Jacob was concerned because Jacob knew if if Esau wanted to and found him, he could hurt him really bad. So Jacob was alone one night. It all came down to him being alone one night. Genesis chapter 32 is verses 24 to 30. I want us to read there. It says, then Jacob was left alone and a man. Notice if it's uh, in, in, in my, in the New King James Version, man is capitalized speaking of God. And a man wrestled with him, wrestled with Jacob, until the breaking of day. Have you ever wrestled with God? Have you ever said, God, why, why, why? Became angry at God and 
became just furious at, at, at God. Well, Jacob was wrestling, the Bible says, with God. God was wrestling with Jacob. And so we know that in the, in the time of, of wrestling with God, there's a, there's a tearing between the flesh, our emotions, and our spirit man. Our spirit man wants to draw closer to God and to receive God, and our flesh becomes angry because things haven't worked the way that we want them to work. Am I talking to anybody this morning? In verse 40, 25 says, Now when God saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip, hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. God allowed Jacob's hip to pop out of joint. Now, I've never had my hip pop out of joint, but I understand it could be a very, very painful experience. And so God allowed Jacob's hip, as they were wrestling, to pop out of joint. Sometimes the only way that God can get our attention is to allow a little pain. I wish that we as humans could draw closer to God before times of coronavirus as we are now experiencing coronavirus. I wish that we as Americans and we as people of God, Christians, and want to know God could draw close to God on September 10th as close as we were on September 11th and 12th. God uses. God doesn't allow. I don't believe God allows pain. God doesn't allow conflict. God, I'm sorry, God doesn't cause pain. God doesn't cause conflict. God is not the author of confusion. But God allows things in our life sometimes, the things in the course of life to happen. He allows those things to get our attention. Sometimes it's difficult for us to come to God's attention, for us to have our face toward Him when everything's perfect, when everything's in line, when we have all the money we want, when we're in perfect health, when we're taking a vacation twice a year. All those things are going on. Life is good, but is God the center of what we're doing? Well, Jacob found out that this pain, this out-of-joint hip caused him to wrestle with God, to press into God even more. God loves us so much. God loves us so much that he wants our attention on him. Why? Because he has the plan for our life. He does cause everything to work together for good. Those who love him are called according to his purpose. purpose. And so in verse 26 it says, And God said, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What would it look like in your life and my life if we pressed into God and said, God, I'm not going to let go. I'm not going to let go until you bless me, until you show me your way, until I follow you, until I trust you greater than I've ever trusted you before. What would our life look like today? Jacob was asking God, God, give me what desperately I need. What did Jacob want? He wanted God's blessing, but there was an inner turmoil in Jacob. There was chaos. There were problems. There was confusion that Jacob wanted out of. He wanted peace. He wanted internal peace. He wanted comfort, and he wanted joy. I believe that Jacob, had he been able to purchase that, go to a store and buy whatever he had, he would give it just for the sake of peace. Did you know that there's not enough money in this world to buy you peace. There's not enough money or things to buy you joy. There's not enough money or things to buy you health. But all of those things are found in Jesus Christ. And Jacob was tired of the chaos. And so in verse 27, Jacob said, God said to Jacob, he said, so what is your name? God said to Jacob. Don't you think God knew Jacob's name? So Jacob said to God, Jacob. Verse 28, he said, this is what God said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Wouldn't that be a great word to get from God today? You have pressed in so much. Your life and your heart has been changed so much that you have prevailed. So that's what God spoke to Jacob that day. He saw that there was a change in Jacob's heart. He saw that Jacob pursued him in a way that he had never pursued him before. He saw a determination. Does that mean that Jacob all of a sudden turned perfect? He didn't make another mistake in his life? No. Jacob was still human, just like I am, just like you are. We're all human. But God was with Jacob because he saw a change in Jacob's heart to the extent that God said, your name is even different. Your name will now be called Israel. The heritage after Jacob. It says, then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. 
And he said, why is it that you ask my name? Jacob wanted an intellectual understanding of what had just happened. What's your name? How did you do what you did? What, what actually happened? Let's talk about the, the, the details of what happened. Aren't, it, that sounds just like us. God, if, if I know what I did, if I knew the formula of what just happened here, what you did in my life, then maybe I can try this again. I can sell a book on telling the one, twos, and threes of what we can do to get the blessings of God. But the change that happened in Jacob was much deeper than a physical or emotional understanding of what God did. It was a spiritual change. And that spiritual change is a miracle. It's a miracle that happens in every one of our lives as we turn our life over to God. As we say, Jesus, here I am. I'm pressing in. I'm not going to let go. Jacob was forever changed. Did you know that as we come to God today, as you come to God today and say, God, I, I don't understand what's going on, but I pursue you. I give my life to you. As we do that, you will forever be changed. You will never, ever be the same again. God always wants us to do, he always wants to do a work in our life. Then in verse 29, the last half of 29, he said, and God blessed him there. Right there, God blessed him. So Jacob called the name of that place Peniel, which means face to face. Isn't that interesting? It means face to face. For I have seen God face to face, the Bible said in verse 30. I have seen God, Jacob said, face to face. These last lines, you, you, these last words you won't underline. And my life is preserved. God wants to preserve your life. God wants to bless your life today. I believe there are three things, and I'm going to, I really want to give you these things in these last few moments that we have together. Three things that happen when we know God, when we press into God. The first one is he gives us a new strength, a new strength. We need a new strength today. So things are so different. I've got this problem. I've got this, this situation right now going on, Mike. Well, did you know that God will give you strength, strength to keep pushing forward, strength to, to be able to get up and to keep going, not to give up? If we had all the strength we needed, why would we need the strength of God? But he knows that we need his strength. Isaiah 40 and verse 29 says this, God gives power to the weak. Are you weak? God is here to give you strength today. Weak and what's the use? Questioning what's my purpose? What, why do I need to continue going on? I don't feel like going on. There are times when you'll feel tired and you'll feel weak. But God says that he has strength for you today. The second thing that God wants to give you as we begin to know him, to know him more in a new way, is a new perspective. A new perspective. See, our perspective changes the closer we get to God. I'm reminded, as I was studying and praying, I was, I'm reminded of a, of a uh, trip that Crystal and I took several years ago up to New York. And as we were in New York, Crystal wanted to go into the Empire State Building. And uh, I'm not real fond of heights, but I said, okay, we'll go to the Empire State Building. So we took to the top floor, and I understand it's over 1,200 feet off of the ground, in the sky, just a little fence dividing. So as we're up at the top of the Empire State Building, I learned, I learned a thing or two. I learned that my perspective on the ground was now different from 1,200 feet in the sky. I found out that the higher I went, the more my perspective changed. Why? Because I can see things more at a distance. I can see things the way fit, things fit together. I see the beauty of things from a different perspective. On the ground, things are beautiful. Things are great. But the higher I went, the more my perspective changed. So I want to encourage you today, draw closer to God. The higher we go in the Lord, the closer we draw to God, the more our perspective will change through his eyes. Did you know that there, there are things in your life today, if we look at these situations around us through the eyes of God, we see that he is very much alive and well. We see that he is very much working. We see that he very much has a plan for our life. God is not at the end of his rope. When we come to the end of ours and trust him and say, God, I need you. I need you more. God, you are faithful. You are good. Your, good, your, your goodness is running after me. I see that. My perspective, God, has changed today. And you will find out that your perspective will be in line with God. Your outlook will be different. You'll think differently. Where, where, where your thinking has been limited, limited by the circumstances and limited by the facts, limited by the situations and the, and the, and the sickness and the, the struggles and, the, and all these things that you're facing today, we'll learn that as we draw closer to God, as we draw higher to Him, get higher and closer to Him, our thinking will be differently. You'll even see yourself differently. You'll see where, where you felt like you were limited on what you could do. You'll see that you're unlimited by the strength and the power of God. God sees you as a winner today. God sees you as more than a, a conqueror today. 
Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18 and 19 says, do not remember the former things. Don't remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. We're in a new season. I will do a new thing, says the Lord. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. There are many things that man cannot do, but God can do all things. God will even cause you to succeed and to prosper when you don't see a way, any, any way around you. God will cause you to be blessed and favored. And the last thing, you'll receive joy. You'll receive joy. Joy comes from knowing God. Why? How can joy come from knowing God? Because God has already conquered everything. He already has the answer to everything. When we, when we come to an understanding of how great God is and he's got the answer, we can come to a place of joy because it's only a matter of time before we see the consequences of the joy in the Lord. That's even our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I was talking to someone yesterday on the phone, a minister on the phone, and, and I asked him, I said, well, how are y'all doing? I love his answer. He said, I'm keeping my humor, and I'm continuing to pray. I said, wow, isn't that awesome? You say, well, there's nothing to laugh about. No, but there's a joy in you. There's a joy that can be in you. There's a joy in this minister that I talked to, to, uh, to yesterday on the phone out of town. And he said, I'm maintaining my joy, my humor. Why? Because he trusts God that God will cause all of this to work together for good. And he's continuing to pray. We've got to continue to pray. But we've got to have God's joy, his peace, his confidence in knowing that he's going to bring everything about in our life that he promises We've got to know God. Draw closer to God. Psalm 16 and verse 11 says this. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of what? Joy. Fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So I want to pray for you today. I want to pray that God will give you new strength. Strength, yes, physical, but also spiritual. Many times we need spiritual strength, not just physical emotional, where we can rest at night, where we can have peace in God at night, where we can rest and know that it's all going to be taken care of. New strength, a new perspective, and seeing that God's hand is, work, is at work. God is not out of answers, but God has all the answers, and God will bring you a new joy, a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. That's the joy that God has for you today, because it's not based on the circumstance, it's not based on what we can see, but it's based on who we know. We know Jesus. We can all draw closer to Jesus today. And I want to pray God's blessings over you. We're here for you. We're here for you. We're praying for you. As Elder Roth said earlier, the doors may be locked right now for the safety, for the honor of what we've been asked to do, but the church of God is very much alive. St. Simon's Christian Renewal is very much alive. And we're going to continue to do what God has called us to do. There's, there's not enough demons in hell to stop or to hinder or to slow down what God wants to do. And I want to pray that same determination in your heart today, that God will do what he says he will do today. Do you want favor? God can bring favor in your life, even in these challenging situations. Do you want to be fulfilled in knowing your purpose in life? God can bring that to you today, even the challenges that you're facing. Do you need healing today in your body, healing in a relationship? God can bring that even with a bad report even with bad circumstances? Do you desire wisdom? God, give me wisdom. God can bring you wisdom today as you seek him, as you press in. Some of you are starving, starving for an experience with Jesus Christ. Jesus has not left you. He's not left you. He's with you. We need to draw close to him. There's nowhere else to turn but Jesus. There's nobody else that can fill that void in your heart today except Jesus Christ. Some of you are running today. Some of you are running away from God and saying that God has nothing for you. God has everything for you. Don't be discouraged today. Be encouraged that Jesus loves you. He's here for you. He's running toward you. His goodness is running after you. Just turn and face him. Call him out. Say, Jesus, Lord God, I need your help today. I need you to bring these things in my life that Mike is talking about. I want to encourage you today. Crystal, if you'll come stand with me. We want to pray for you today, knowing that we love you, we're standing with you, we're not making light of the situation at all. We understand that 
There's hardships. There's difficult times right now. But God is with you. God is with you to encourage you, to build you up, to increase your faith in him. Our faith in him must not waver. So I encourage you today to draw close to him. And so, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, as we've read your word, as we've seen what happened in the life of Jacob, Lord, as he pressed into you to make time and priority to not let you go, but say, God, I, I want you to bless me. Lord, may our determination be that of Jacob, that we press in today like never before, that, that we're so determined, God, that if it means losing sleep at night to pursue and to pray, not to worry, not to be anxious, that's contrary to your word but to pursue you in a way that our faith grows, that we want to learn more of you. We want to know your character more. We want to know how powerful and how awesome you are, not to read about it or to say it, but to experience it. God, thank you that you're God of experience today, that you want us to experience you. And Lord, I pray just a, a new release, Father, of your anointing in every person's life. God, that we will press into you, that we will see things turn in Jesus' name. God, give us the faith to see it, Lord, before we see it with our physical eyes. Give us faith, Lord, to see it in our spirit, man, to trust you, to know you, to follow after you in all of our ways. I pray may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his awesome peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll be back here at 1030 next Sunday morning. We're praying for you. God bless you today.